Hey guys, what's up? I'm here with a review of a 2017 horror comedy, independent horror comedy, mind you, called Dark Side of the Womb. This film has to do with a dwarf with an Oedipus complex who falls in love with a normal-sized woman, and when the world doesn't think they belong together, he climbs into her womb to be reborn. That just sounds right up my alley. It sounds like something I would really love, doesn't it? So, um... Our film opens with our main character and his twin brother being born and his mother hating him almost instantly uh, because he's a bastard child. We skip ahead 30 years where uh, Justin, who is Ed's twin brother, uh, leaves home after essentially being there for 30 years, leaving uh, mother there with Ed. And it's a fairly like dramatic scene and it's well shot and it's interesting and it actually like sets this movie up to be like, oh, this is going to be dramatic, and it's like, I thought this was a horror comedy, and then suddenly Ed walks into the room, and it's just, I was just giggling my fucking ass off, um, I was, I was just fucking giggling quite a bit, uh, and essentially after that, Justin goes out, he is then murdered, and this leaves Ed essentially by himself with his mother, who has always hated him. So to start off, I think that this film is actually fairly well acted, considering the cast is made up of practically nobody's um everybody seems to at least be having a good time with the film and at least trying then so i can give credit there the writing in the film is solid like i like um like i said with the opening with that opening scene it's it's fairly it's well shot and lit and i think the whole film throughout the entire thing is very well shot and lit, especially towards the last 20 minutes um it, it becomes kind of stylized and surreal and i really dig that I will say uh, that even though on a technical standpoint it's pretty well made, the sound design in the film is far from perfect and it's hard to get perfect audio quality when shooting on a low budget. And there's also times in the film where the music is louder than the dialogue and my fucking dogs are barking. I love this shit. Loving it. But that's another thing that's kind of common to happen in low budget horror. Uh, what there are of practical gore effects are mostly done with what looks like spirit Halloween level, like, severed limb props. And yeah, it's cheap, it's cheesy, it looks dumb, but it's definitely charming, and I think it adds, um, I think it adds something to the film, definitely. I think if the, I think if these, there's the, I think if there, there's a scene where, where there's a bunch of severed limbs in a box... I feel like if they would have looked realistic, it wouldn't have been as, like, uh, as humorous of a scene. So I do think it kind of adds an interesting kind of cheesy aspect to the movie. As for their visual effects, there are some that, to put it bluntly, are kind of terrible. Um, there are some, like, panning shots, not panning shots, but there are some shots that are, like, I believe, I'm sure they were shot with using a drone or something like that, that they try to put, like, a filter over or a frame on top of to make it look a certain way and it just does not work and it just looks bad that being said these aren't distracting elements from the film they do not distract from all of the positive elements um in the film mm. uh i think the characters in the film are fleshed out enough for this kind of movie for a you know a little bunch of horror comedy of this nature you don't need the most fleshed out characters, you just need to care for at least the two main characters. And the characters of Ed and Linda, the two main characters, are fairly likable. The rest of the characters are either forgettable, hateable, because they're supposed to be, or, uh, or they're funny and goofy. The characters' antics is a big part of what makes this movie funny. It's a big part of the humor, I should say. Mm. There are also some scenes in this movie that uh, give off this super goofy, like, reanimator and or, like, Frank Henenlotter in general, specifically Frankenhooker kind of vibe, with there being subplots about limb transplants and ex medical experiments. Um, there are scenes that are shot in black and white. There are a couple that are supposed to be kind of like nightmare and or flashback scenes, and those are fairly well put together and dramatic, and they're interesting enough. Um... There are scenes that do take place inside of the womb, which I think, uh, you know, those scenes start out as, like, just normal kind of average scenes, and then they, and then as the film goes on, they become more and more comedic, specifically one scene involving, uh, abortion, 
and I think that that's just hilarious. Uh, mm, God damn, I have burps. I haven't burped like fucking crazy. Uh, and the effect for the uh, womb, for the womb scenes, is also cheesy as hell, but it's charming and funny. And funny. Uh, overall, I would say the pacing in the film is good. It's a little slow at times, but I would never say it was a boring uninteresting film. There was always something interesting going on. Uh, although, I will say there were scenes that, again, while they were interesting or funny, they did feel very, very unnecessary, and they did feel like they kind of dragged the movie down a bit and just slowed the film down in general. Um, I think a great example is when Linda meets with the doctor after the surgery uh, that, that they perform on her boyfriend. That scene felt very unnecessary, other than to introduce the two main characters. And if you wanted to do that, just have them meet at a bus stop or something. Uh, there's also a subplot in this film about a murderous clown who's on the loose, and his and he lives in an abandoned mannequin factory, and he talks to the mannequins as as if they're alive, and even imagines them uh, as being alive at one point and dances with them. And this is literally a direct reference to Maniac, one of my favorite slash films of all time. I love Maniac. It's a, an amazing, an amazing film. Uh, truly one of the best out there when it comes to uh, slashers. On the gore meter, from 1 to 10, 1 being something like Nosferatu, 10 being something like Peter Jackson's Brain Dead, The Dark Side of the Womb probably sits, I would say, at a 2. Um... You know, the effects are cheesy all the way through. It doesn't get, like, a little bit stomach-churning until the end of the film, um, where you get into the cool climax that you... that, that, that that's It's like the moment you've been waiting for. Um, not the end, but, like, last 20 minutes, I should say. I really like this movie. It was fun as hell. It was original, and it's something we lack. It's, that is definitely... Those two things are things we lack in horror movies these days, even even independent horror movies sometimes um, lack originality and just a fun nature. To be honest, if you aren't used to low budget horror, if you don't, if you can't stand it when uh, the effects don't look realistic, if you can't stand, you know, a movie obviously being shot cheap, uh, obviously being shot on a low budget because it, it has low budget films have that look to them. If you can't stand that kind of look, it's not really a movie for you. Uh, you might want to skip it, I would say. I only... the My, I, I, my only... Ugh, for fuck's sake. My only complaints about this film are those few scenes that didn't really feel necessary. Um, as well as um, the fact that it wasn't as gross as it sounded as a movie. As a movie, it sounded like just some kind of... Like, like I said, Frank Hinnenlauter-esque like, just gross horror comedy. It sounded it sounded kind of like, not plot-wise, but it sounded similar to, like, Basket Case, how Basket Case has, has, a, has a kind of gross premise. Um, this film doesn't. It's more funny and surreal, especially towards the end. The end, towards the end where it becomes surreal is, like, easily the best part in the entire movie, and I really, really dig it. Um... But yeah, other than those scenes and the fact that it wasn't... I, I would also like to say um, there wasn't enough weird body horror shit in the movie. Uh, same with the gore. There wasn't enough gore or weird body horror shit. That's just my personal preferences, and those are just things I expected to see from this film, uh, even though it is shot on a low budget. I still kind of expected there to be more body horror or more gore. Not saying that that ruins the film at all. It is still a pretty fun movie. That being said, I would still... Th th all these, you know, negative things being said, I'd still say that this movie is well worth your time. If it sounds interesting to you, you should check it out when it hits... Um, when it gets released. Um, that's really all I have to say. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a... 3.5, 4 out of 5. I'm going to go ahead and give it this. Very, very high, solid rating, because I legitimately had a lot of fun with this movie. Not gonna lie. Uh, but anyway, guys, this is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews signing off. Peace.